more about extraction performance of a diffuser station. Welcome to BMS webinar. The topic for today's webinar is modeling the extraction performance of a diffuser station. This paper was presented at the 31st Congress of the International Society of Sugarcane Technologists, which was held in Hyderabad, India in February 2023. Now, extraction of sucrose through diffusion process is when dissolved molecules in solutions at different concentration diffuse as a result of the concentration gradient until an equilibrium is reached. The figure on the right shows a typical moving bed, uh, bed cane diffuser where cane is fed from one end of the diffuser and leaves the diffuser at the opposite end. There are two sets of lifting screws which are installed um, along the at two different locations along the length of the diffuser and each set is uh, installed along the width of the diffuser. These lifting screws assist in percolation of juice through the bug as bed and ensures that flooding does not occur. To maximize extraction, uh, interstate juice pumps are installed and these pumps take the juice from the succeeding stage and add it as imbibition to the preceding stage. Essentially, the bagasse moves uh, in one direction while the flow of juice is directed in the opposite direction, uh, essentially uh, uh, for a, uh, in a counter current fashion. Now, Ryan in 1972 proposed that extraction in a diffuser occurs via two simultaneously uh, occurring processes. In the first process, the juice which is available in the open cells is extracted through a displacement washing process. And in the second, the juice which is available in the closed cells is extracted through a molecular diffusion process. Now, Ryan proposed that the displacement washing process is a much faster process than the molecular diffusion process. Since this paper looked at development of an improved model for the diffuser station or for the diffuser process, um, it would be worthwhile to look at the previous diffuser models and understand their limitations. So the previous diffuser models were developed with a particular aspect of diffuser operation in mind. So Ryan in 1972 developed a mathematical model proposing extraction occurs uh, via two uh, simultaneously occurring processes and he proposed two mass transfer coefficients uh, K1 and K2 and finally the model determined the concentration of extracted juice. The mass transfer coefficient K1 affected the extraction of juice from open cells which is the washing displacement process. And K2 is the mass transfer coefficient which affected the extraction of juice from closed cells, which is the uh, molecular diffusion process. Ryan proposed that K1 is much, much larger than K2. Further on, Ryan and Ingham in 1992 uh, developed uh, uh, another model which understood the factors uh, influencing percolation velocities and flooding. So, through their model, they proposed um, an operational strategy which would maximize extraction while at the same time reducing flooding. Picaro et al. in 1994 developed a juice flow model to determine the quantity of juice recirculation and juice bypassing within a single stage. This improved model includes the fundamental feature of assessing and predicting the effect of cane quality, which is bricks or pole, cane preparation, which is uh, described in terms of POC, and the operating conditions of the diffuser on the extraction performance of the diffuser. In addition, this model includes a detailed mill extraction model to determine the performance of the dewatering mill so that the extraction performance of the complete diffuser station can be modeled. Now, the model of the diffuser extraction process for the whole diffuser includes a model of a diffuser extraction process for a single stage and then using mass balance equations, the constituents of juice and bagasse can be transport, transferred from one stage to the next stage. 
So if we consider the bagasse that's entering um, the stage N, the bagasse comprises of the soluble component which is juice and the in insoluble component which is the fiber. The fiber and the hygroscopic water which is uh, a part of the fiber does not take part in the extraction process. Now within the soluble component we have water and the dissolved solids which is bricks. If you look at the way the uh, uh, bagasse that's entering the stage and is, is described, so we have some juice which is open in, which is available in open cells and some juice which is available um, in closed cells. When we add imbibition to the stage N that comprises of juice which is available in open cells. In the first phase of the model, the juice that's added as imbibition to the stage N mixes with the bagasse uh, with the juice that's available for mixing uh, in the bagasse that's entering stage N. Now obviously the juice that's in closed cell would, uh, would not participate in the mixing process and only the juice that's in the open cells would participate in the mixing process. However, not all of the juice that's available in the open cells is mixed and some of that juice remains in unmixed. So the model accounts for imperfect mixing to occur. Now as the juice starts to uh, run through the uh, uh, percolate uh, the, the bagasse bed, it starts uh, it's mixing with the juice in the open cells and it's collecting at the end of the stage in the juice trough that's below the bagasse bed. Now again, not all of the juice that's flowing through the bagasse bed gets collected within that stage and some of the juice gets left behind within the bagasse bed. So as the juice percolates through the bed, the model can account for imperfect percolation to occur or incomplete percolation to occur. Further on, as the bagasse moves forward, as a result of temperature within the bagasse bed, some of the juice that's in the closed cells starts to become available as the membrane of the, uh, uh, of the cell membrane of, of, of that particular cell starts to uh, permeate uh, through the process. And this process is usually defined as diffusion. Now again, not all the cells that are uh, closed become available within a single stage itself and the model can control the amount of cells that are opened within the diffusion phase. Finally, in the unification phase, we can assume that all of the juice in the mixed, unmixed and diffuse component become part of the open cells while the closed cells again move forward and the bagasse is now ready for uh, mixing in the next stage. Now it is important to understand that the distinction between these phases is more or less artificial and these processes occur uh, simultaneously within a single stage. The distinction within these phases is, is done to help understand how the model works and to calculate the different uh, phases within the model. Now since we have three different phases uh, in the extraction model, we would need performance indicators to describe and quantify these phases. So in the first phase of mixing, we need a mixing factor to describe and quantify the quantity of juice that is left unmixed within the mixed bagasse uh, phase. Hence a mixing factor is defined. The percolation factor is defined as the ratio of the mass of juice that's percolated through the bagasse bed per unit mass of fiber to the total quantity of juice that's available in the bagasse bed per unit mass of fiber. So essentially the percolation factor tells us the quantity of juice that's percolated through the bagasse bed and collected in the juice trough below the bed as uh, compared to the amount of juice that's present within that stage. And lastly, the diffusion factor uh, defines the number of cells that are opened or diffused as a result of temperature within a single stage. Now, the model uses all of these three performance indicators uh, during the assessment uh, mode of the model to understand how the diffuser is performing and can be used to predict the performance of, a, of the diffuser if the indicators are known. Now, what is the data that's required to calculate the performance indicators? 
We need to understand what type of diffuser it is. Is it a cane diffuser or a bagasse diffuser? Although that does not change how the performance indicators are defined or calculated. But uh, we need to understand uh, that information. We need to understand, uh, need, we need to know the number of stages a diffuser has and the length of individual stages. And also the how many dewatering mills does the diffuser have uh, for drying the bagasse. In terms of operating data, we need the cane rate, the cane analysis and the preparation index which is usually uh, defined by the POC. We need the bagasse bed height, the bagasse bed speed, uh, the imbibition percent fiber which is usually a target set by the factory and uh, the imbibition profile for each stage. And I'll talk about what the imbibition profile means in the next few slides. Also, if the um, factory is using direct steam injection into the bagasse bed to maintain the temperature, this steam essentially would condense into uh, water and be part of the juice. So we need to account for that additional uh, steam that's injected. Now all of this operating data is usually uh, available from the DCS. Factories rarely measure the direct steam injection, but if we take a, um, if, if we undertake a heat balance for the entire factory, we can more or less account how much steam, steam is being consumed by the diffuser. In addition to the operating data, we need some routine analysis. So we need to measure the bricks of juices from all stages from, from the juice trough. We need to measure the bricks and moisture of wet bagasse which is exiting the diffuser and this is rarely undertaken. We also need to undertake the POC measurement of that wet bagasse. The bricks and moisture of dry bagasse which is the bagasse exiting the dewatering mill is usually undertaken to understand the, the, the bagasse loss, the pole losses in final bagasse. And Lastly, we need to measure the juice percolating velocity for each stage in the diffuser. Okay, so what is the juice percolating, uh, percolating velocity? So on the right is a schematic showing uh, typical operating parameters of a moving bed cane diffuser. So we have the bagasse bed height uh, uh, h which is measured in meters. The bagasse bed is moving uh, to the right. Uh, with a speed of s which is measured in meters per minute. The length of the stage b is, uh, is given in meters and we have the juice percolating velocity which is the downward velocity of the liquid as it moves through the cane particles. Now the juice percolating velocity is related to the percolation factor which is given by the equation that's shown on the screen. So on the left hand side of the equation is the percolation factor for that stage and on the right a PV is the percolation velocity of that stage divided by the speed of the uh, bagasse bed multiplied by the ratio of the uh, stage length to the uh, bagasse bed height. Now juice percolating velocity can be measured using a tracer. So in this case you could add a color tracer or you, you could add a line and then measure the hike in the pH of the collected sample or you could uh, have uh, add salt and measure the conductivity uh, in the sample. A non-intrusive method of measuring the juice percolating velocity is by the pump stop test where the pump uh, of n plus 1 uh, stage is stopped and it's the juice level in the n stage uh, in, in the side glass of the end stage is visually uh, monitored where we can see uh, as the level uh, decreases. Since this method is, does not usually require any sort of tracer and it's cheap, it's usually, usually undertaken. However, if we measure, if we use this method, we are only measuring the reduction in the uh, juice level in the side glass which is on the side of the diffuser and we don't really understand what's happening in the middle of the bagasse bed. One additional way of understanding or measuring juice percolating velocity is by turning off the juice pump of the end stage itself and recording the rise in the level in the nth juice tree. Now to do this we need level indicators to be installed on all the uh, uh, juice troughs at the bottom of the uh, diffuser which is a standard feature for all BMA design diffusers. 
Now, why do we measure the juice percolating velocity? Well, for once, it tells us some uh, uh, level of information regarding uh, how the juice is flowing through the bagasse bed and if flooding is occurring or not. But more importantly, it helps us calculate or understand the imbibition profile for each stage in the diffuser. Now, in countercurrent diffusion process, where the cane is moving to the right and the juice is moving to the left, the juice from N plus 1 is added as imbibition to the end stage. Now, if all the uh, if the conditions are at optimum level, all the juice from n plus one should find its way in into the nth juice tray, as, is, um, as it is shown in the schematic in Figure A. However, in operation, what we see is that if the juice percolating velocity is too high, or if the bed speed is too low some of the juice from n plus 1 would end up in n minus 1 that means that that quant volume of juice has bypassed the end stage and directly gone into n minus 1 which means we have lost that uh, 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 one very very small fraction chance of extracting more of that sucrose within the bagasse on the other hand if the bed speed is too high or the juice percolating velocity is too low some of the juice from n plus 1 would end up back in n plus 1 itself. So, uh, essentially resulting in recirculation of the juice. Now, what does that uh, uh, have uh, as a repercussion in terms of extraction? We will see further in the presentation. So, once the model was developed, we realized that we need to have some uh, operational values from a working diffuser to better understand how the model is reacting to uh, uh, to these different conditions and what the indicators look like. So, we uh, traveled to a South African sugar factory where we collected the data uh, for the diffuser, which was a 7 meter, a 7.5 meter wide diffuser and had a length of 54 meters. The diffuser had 14 stages, including the first draft to a juice stage and the scaling juice stage and 12 extraction stages. It is to be noted that for the sake of the model, or each stage is considered as an extraction stage because there is an contact between the juice and bagasse. So, for, for the sake of the model, it is calculated for 14 stages. The length of the uh, stage, the operating bed height, bed speed, everything was uh, collected and the imbibition percent fiber was uh, uh, um, as selected by the factory uh, was taken over the period of time that the tests were undertaken. The test could not be undertaken consecutively because uh, there was shortages in the lab staff, but we did undertake the measurements for a period of 10 days, although not consecutively, it was probably uh, two or three measurements per week. The cane, uh, the diffuser was processing a cane um, at 200 ton per hour, and the cane uh, and bagasse analysis uh, for the wet bagasse and the dry bagasse uh, was measured. The bricks of the diffuser stage, stage juices, which is for all the 14 streams, were also measured. The mill extraction model that was proposed by Thawal 2012 was used to understand the performance of the dewatering mill. Now coming on to the results uh, from the model, before we jump uh, into the performance indicators, let us understand a bit more about imbibition profile and, and bricks curve. So, the imbibition profile shows the fraction of juice going from uh, going to the preceding stage from, from the succeeding stage. So, from stage number n plus 1 to stage n, uh, it shows how much of that juice is going to stage n. So, if I look at the stage number 4, the juice from stage number 4, I can see that 16 percent of that uh, juice is going to stage number 3, if you look at uh, the stages on the y axis. What I realized or what we realized is that for all the stages, 80 percent of the juice ends up in the same stage where it had originated. So, for example, 83 percent of the juice from the stage number 6 would end up back in stage number 6. Now, what does this mean in terms of Brick's uh, curve or Brick's profile? So, if there is higher recirculation occurring within a stage, that would increase the Brick's of the juices and increase the bricks profile through the entire diffuser. Now, normally the way the extraction of a diffuser is, was, was assessed was plotting the bricks curve of the diffuser 
uh, that we are trying to understand and comparing that BRICS curve to a typical BRICS curve as shown by Ryan 2017. So on the graph you can see the typical BRICS curve in the red plot and the actual BRICS curve is measured for this diffuser. Now setting aside the fact that the, the BRICS for uh, the BRICS values for the draft juice are, are almost more than uh, three units lower uh, as com compared to the typical BRICS curve. But it needs to be understood that for this typical BRICS curve, the imbibition was more than 350% uh, fiber. So overall, the BRICS values could be lower. But what, what we are really looking at is the sharp drop in the BRICS values in the early stages of the diffuser, which helps set a lower BRICS profile for all the stages compared uh, 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 to the one that we have recorded in the black plot. And one of the reasons for this is, is the high recirculation that's occurring within all the stages for the diffuser results in that the BRICS level of the juices are quite high. In terms of the performance indicators, the percolation factor values are higher at the front end of the diffuser as compared to the back end. And this makes sense because we have a higher juice flow rate at the front end which would increase the juice percolating velocity which would then increase the percolation factor at the front end. Now when we look at the mixing factor values for all the stages, mixing factor essentially depends on the concentration gradient between the two mixing uh, bodies. So we have the juice that's added as imbibition and then we have the juice in bagasse and greater the concentration gradient, higher, wet, higher would be the mixing. Now as a result of high recirculation of juice, which would increase the BRICS profile, this concentration gradient would be lower and mixing factor is lower. So one thing what we have realized using this model is that in order for the extraction performance of the diffuser to be increased, mixing factors need to be high and for mixing factors to be higher, we need to have less recirculation within the stages so that there's a higher concentration gradient between the imbibition and bagasse, the juice in bagasse uh, bed. For this, uh, we have seen that the mixing factors are, are lower than 0 0.2. Now, the, the line that I've drawn at 0 0.2 is, is an arbitrary line since this is the first time that we have applied this model uh, to an actual diffuser we, and we know less about these performance indicators. Um, I've just drawn this line at 0 0.2 to show that that lower mixing factors were recorded as a result of higher recirculation of juices within the stages. In concluding, an extended model of the diffuser extraction process is developed, which defines the extraction processes in three phases mixing, percolation and diffusion. New non-dimensional performance indicators are developed which describe and quantify the three phases. The model requires diffuser operational data and bagasse and juice analysis as inputs. Assessing the percolation factor of each stage uh, gives us a, an understanding of the juice extraction for that particular stage as in how well the juice is percolating through the bagasse bed and this could change depending on uh, how fine is the bagasse prepared, what is the uh, um, uh, particle size uh, distribution in, within the bagasse bed which could be different for different cane varieties. So the percolation factor also gives us an indication about um, uh, what is the, uh, the type of cane and the preparation level would have, uh, uh, what effect it would have on the extraction of the diffu uh, of, uh, in the diffuser. The mixing factor and the diffusion factor for each stage is used to assess the BRICS extraction uh, within that stage. The performance indicators then can provide insights into understanding uh, causes of low extraction and how do we sort of um, um, attend to those, uh, those causes or how we deal with those uh, issues. As I said that we have applied this model for the first time to an actual diffuser. So very less is known about how the, the performance indi indicators can vary. So further work is being planned to improve our understanding of the performance indicators 
and develop empirical relationships so that we can predict extraction when the operating conditions change. If you have any questions, please leave your comments below the video and thank you for your attention.